Breaking news, a power outage in the Sugarland area. This is a look at Center Point's outage tracker. You can see that outage stretches from 59 North along Highway 6. Center Point tells ABC 13 crews are in that area right now. They're trying to figure out a cause for that outage and get it back restored. Well, Houston ISD is reporting new cases of COVID-19. Yeah, the COVID dashboard for the district shows 104 cases. That's 14 more than we saw Wednesday night. Now, those cases are part of the reason HISD teachers took part in a sick out. That's when employees will coordinate calling in sick as a form of protest. Dozens of teachers took part. ABC 13's Charlie Edsity joins us this morning talking about the message they wanted to send. Good morning, Charlie. Yeah, good morning, Stephen. It's just been a very eventful week for everybody in HISD. And now we have teachers saying that they simply don't feel safe with the in-person learning as it stands. And this morning, we're across the street from Daly Elementary. This is one of the 16 campuses, HISD campuses, that were shut down earlier this week because of confirmed cases of COVID-19. And so dozens of HISD teachers actually called in sick yesterday, not showing up to work in order to make a point about what they say campuses would look like without teachers. So let's take a look at the list of changes that they are now asking for on campuses. The first thing, social distancing of six feet and limiting class sizes. They also want to see meals happening outside and also improvements to the HVAC systems inside the buildings. They also want disciplinary actions if someone does not follow the PPE guidelines. They want to quarantine the entire school if there is a COVID-19 case on campus and also allow for contact tracing and Lastly, this one's very interesting. They say if staff resigns due to unsafe conditions, they don't want to be penalized for it. So the teachers involved in this sick out are obviously very outspoken and believe that uh, there are some definite improvements that can be made with uh, the school and how it's going so far this year. I don't think I've seen any models of any other school districts where anything has worked. All right, so what you're looking at right now is the HISD statement in response to these teachers. The district is basically doubling down on the in-person learning, saying that it's going to keep keep on continuing with safety measures in place, of course. And they say that this is all under the guidance of CDC and local health authorities. They also added that the health and safety of staff and students still remains their top priority. Charlie at City, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Thanks so much, Charlie. Well, today, Harris County could top 1 million votes. That's according to the latest numbers from the county clerk. More than 76,000 votes were cast yesterday. The total is now 951,066. And today is an important deadline. It is the last day to apply for a mail-in ballot. The request has to be received today, not postmarked today. Early voting lasts through October 30th. Election day is November 3rd. We are monitoring three big developments in the fight against COVID-19. The FDA has approved the first antiviral drug to treat patients. Remdesivir is given through an IV and is available for those at least 12 years old who are in the hospital. One of the possible vaccines that's being developed could hit the market by December. More good news there, and that is according to Moderna's president. The company just finished enrolling 30,000 participants for its clinical trials in the United States. Meanwhile, Walgreens just announced that children ages three and over can be tested for COVID-19 at its locations. Previously, Walgreens tested those 18 and over. A parent or guardian has to take their kids to that appointment and workers will instruct parents how to administer the test. Walgreens says most tests results are available between 72 and or 24 and 72 hours. Well, now to a warning this morning for families about the dangers of asps. The season for stinging caterpillars is here. ABC 13 reporter TJ Parker live at Memorial Park and TJ, our chief meteorologist Travis Herzog spotted one hiding in plain sight. Yeah, he posted this picture on Twitter yesterday of one that he found on his AC unit. So you can really find these things anywhere. We're at Memorial Park this morning. Obviously a good spot to find those. It's something you don't want to find, though. Let's show you that post that uh, Travis had made yesterday of that uh, asp. You can see it there, and it got a lot of people talking. Yes, it looks like a regular fuzzy caterpillar, which it is. But if you come across these guys before, you know it can pack a very painful sting. These little caterpillars are often in oak trees, rose bushes, and ivy. 
flora we find all across our area. And every fall we see these things. We talked to a woman a few years back who was stung by one of these. She says she was just standing in a parking lot at work when it happened. It was excruciating for that first 12 to 18 hours after the initial bite. It blew my mind that it was this itty bitty little fluffy caterpillar. <laughs> Pain could include uh, burning, itching, uh, rashes, blistering, um, trouble breathing, chest pains. Oh yeah, that does not sound fun. Okay, so if you do get stung by one of these things, experts say put scotch tape on your arm where you got stung, pull it off, hopefully you can pull those stingers out, and then put an ice pack on your arm to reduce the swelling there. Guys, again, if you see one of those asps, it's best to steer clear of them. We're live at Memorial Park this morning. I'm TJ Parker, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. All right, thanks so much, TJ. Well, we are checking on this forecast with Alita Loresca this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Not only is it Friday, but it is cool front day. Again, they missed it. All right, <laughs> more today. Rain chances will be building out ahead of this front and temperatures expected to warm. Now we may not, some areas may not hit that high if those rain showers briefly cool you off. Until that front moves through later on tonight, we won't see any sort of humidity relief. You can see uh, some widespread rain showers becoming a little bit better in coverage by three, four o'clock. So I've raised those rain chances here in Houston at about 40% and then dry Dropping the rain chances once the front moves through, our coastal areas will start to dry out after 10, 11 o'clock in the evening. So by 3, 4 o'clock this afternoon, that frontal boundary will still be locked up to the north and west of town. We'll see those temperatures pressing in the mid to upper 80s. Feeling sticky this morning, but I think our northwest counties who will see the first taste of that drier air will slowly start to see that dry air filtering into the Houston area between 9, 10 o'clock this evening, and then shortly thereafter, our coastal community. So by Saturday morning, we've got enough of that dry air that's going to allow those temperatures to drop. It is going to feel fall fresh tomorrow morning as those temperatures bottom out into the 50s, upper 50s in Houston. Saturday afternoon looking good. And the reason why we're going to stay so cool on Saturday is because we've got a lot of clouds that are going to they're going to be hanging tough with that northerly breeze. Some of you may not even make it to 70, 70 degrees depending on that cloud cover. You'll notice that front it does move offshore and then returns as a warm front as we get into Sunday. That warm front is going to draw back the warmth and then we've got some wet weather. A secondary front, a stronger one arrives next week. That one delivers some wetter, cooler conditions. The good news is that that front will clear out by Friday, cooling us off by Halloween morning temperature readings in the low 50s. So for trick or treaters, if they've got the long sleeves, they're going to be Jedi Knights or they're going to be clowns <laughs> with sleeves. It's looking pretty nice for those trick or treater plants. All right. Love the sound of that alita thanks and thank you all for joining us i'll be a jedi knight by the way there you go <laughs> you've never even seen star wars i've never seen star wars okay That's never mind okay all I'll right be a pumpkin. calling her out have a great friday everybody <laughs> <laughs>